long as you want to. Because, like, I mean, no one can really tell you that you can't. No one. If you tell yourself you can't, then you won't. And if, if and like, let's be clear, it's not based on talent. <laughs> if, the, if there's plenty of people out there that you can look at and say, how did this person get to where they are? Their work, their drive. You're going to do it forever. If this is what you want to do. The greatest. Well, she the said. <laughs> yeah. And it hurts sometimes. Oh, boy. A lot. <laughs> Physically, emotionally, spiritually. It hurts and it pulls at you in directions that sometimes conflict and they'll test you. And and I think the, the lesson that I've learned to say is that when you have a faith in what you believe you want to do and that is your, that's your foundation, everything that comes that seems like a tough point in your life is a veil and a distraction to try to pull you off of what your faith is and what you believe it is. And if it's strong and if it's that thing that is burning inside of you, you just, you see it and you just don't stop. Hello. I would actually like to direct my question to Carmen. Um, if you have any advice for um, someone who, like myself, I'm interested in being an artist manager. And I kind of don't know what the avenue is to, to begin with at the moment. I have the insane belief in my artists. I just don't know where to take it. Uh, good question. There is no school for being a manager. So it, it doesn't, you don't have to rely on anything other than your ability, your instincts, and relationships at this point. If you believe in her that much, and I tell this to a lot of people who've gone on to like the super managers and the people who, you know, they've worked on one person and had that success and then think that they can apply that to every artist that comes their way. It doesn't work like that. You really have to find the one person that truly believes on you and is going to manage every part of your life. Sometimes it's not even just your career. And if you feel as, as strong as you said, it's so hard because I can't see you. If you feel like you did when you just stood up that you believe in her this much, then every day is going to be in your heart when you wake up. There's times I fall asleep and I tell Melanie, listen, you're on my mind and I'm falling asleep and I wake up and I think about you. I'm up at 2 a.m. thinking about her. You know, if that's where you feel towards this artist that's next to you, then really it's just about you making that right connection and meeting someone. And don't let anyone feel as though what your instinct tells you or your lack, let's say, of understanding of how the business works means that you would not make a great manager at all. It really comes with each day. And each day I'm faced with sometimes I have a, something about being an accountant. Sometimes it's about being a lawyer. Sometimes it might be about being a choreographer. I've been on her bus where I'm making, like, arts and crafts. It's just <laughs> wherever you apply yourself, honestly, is just developing that artist. And if that artist is really the beacon and putting in their work, people are going to be drawn to you, too. And, and let me ask you this, Carm. Do you feel as a manager or a person trying to get into management that they should focus on maybe one act or they, should they have two or three and, 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 and focus on more than one? I think that depends on the person. I have more of a boutique style of management. I don't really feel that you can give your all to everyone. Um, I That's just my way. There are people who sign and have 12 acts, and three of them are superstars, and they just cross deals between them. One doesn't pick it, they hand it to the other one. I don't really feel like that's real, true management and developing a career more than just working on the thing that's hot at that moment. And when that artist isn't, they let them go because there's really no love and heart and sweat into it. So I'm more into a boutique style to be honest. So it depends on the person. I Yes, I multitask. At the end of the day, I'm still a woman. I have other clients, writers, producers. I'm a mother of two. I still have things in my life that I have to take care of, but I know that when it comes to my clients, I live and breathe for them like I do if it were my own children. So mine, mine's limited. You have to base it on yourself and the person that you go to as your manager. You'll be able to see if they can multitask. And let me just say, you know, give you a round of applause for that. Being a mother of two and a very successful Businesswoman as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I had a mic. Uh, first of all, um, when you walked in the room, Mel, like, swag was crazy. Like, I know Carmen talked about having a glow. I was like, damn. Carmen's got one too. I got it from my mama. Um, <laughs> so, um, my question has to do with uh, you said you were away for nine years in the States. I'm still away. Yeah. True. So, nine years is a pretty long time. So how do you deal with sort of the doubts and uh, well, were there period, were there times of doubt and how did you deal with that? Maybe coming home, parental pressure, things like that. 
first of all, nine years is not a long time. It's not. I mean, I'm only 16, so. <laughs> I mean, I've been doing this since the womb, dog. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, uh, but, but really, when I tell you that these nine years, they've passed very quickly. Like, it's not, I, I don't, it, it, I was, I just believed in it. I believed in, in it. I believed in us. I believed what we could do together. I believed in, in the things I was going to learn and understand about my purpose and myself as an artist. Um, even before I even got there, just, I felt like I could do it. I felt like it was possible. And sure, there were lots of times, there were lots of times we sat on the floor and were like, yo, what now? Like, we just, just, we, we got to deal with this person. This person doesn't get it. We got to deal with this. This person doesn't, oh, man, like, what? We sat many times, went back to the drawing <coughs> board, scrapped all projects, scrapped music, scrapped sessions and money and time. And I got Guyanese parents. They're looking at me like, you're going to be a doctor, a lawyer. Okay. <laughs> and when I tell you, when I tell you, I, I, I'll tell you, I came home from, from school. And I was, I was in high school, and this is before I met Carmen. And I came home, and I said to my dad, I'm like, Dad, I'm going to pass on university right now, and I'm going to pursue music. And my dad said, my dad is a musician at heart, and he was like, you know what? School will always be there. All right, we'll give you, you know, do, you got to explore what you got to do. Go do it. My mom hit the roof. How are you going to make these decisions without me? Oh, my God. <laughs> um, and I went, and when I met Carmen, I had now walked away from the situation that I was in before, and I had met Carmen, and I was in school, and I said to her, look, this is really important to me. This is really important for me to do school and do this. And she was like, you know it's going to take you a little longer, right? And I was like, yeah. And she supported me while I did courses and then flew down for two weeks and did courses, and I... <coughs> I got to a point in my last year of college where I was like, yo, I have to go. I have to go for real, for real. Like, for real and do it. And I sacrificed the, the course of business I wanted to be in, and I had to go another route just to finish. And I finished. I did. So I, 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 I did business, and, and I did it. And she supported me throughout it. But when I tell you, there were moments of, what if they just don't get it? How long is this going to take? What is it? What is it? But when I tell you I never believed I couldn't do it, that's what kept me going. She would look at me every day and be like, I will not allow you to give up on yourself. We will figure it out. We will make this happen because I see something in you. I see the vision. Carmen is one of the most dedicated and loyal and patient people I have ever met in my life. And she'll tell you sometimes almost to a fault. But when I tell you this is someone that I had mentoring me that never took no for an answer, like never, somebody would tell her no, and by the end of it, they'd be like, whatever you want. Because she would refuse to have somebody tell her what she sees and what she envisions is not possible, because she can see it. Now, if you don't see it, then you're not the right person for us to be working with. Oh, man. But I need someone who can see this, and I got that from her. So. Every time I saw her with all that she's given to me, 